What shocked you the most about about our business? Because we're in the insurance business. What shocked you the most as you kind of parallel our industry, our business, our ways of making revenue compared to the the uh, three thousand people that were there, the the, the fifty different industries that were there? Well, what did you see that was pretty significant? It's like, well, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you three things really clear. One, the profit margins. Our business is insane because we have no inventory. We have yeah. almost no ever overhead functionally compared to a lot of other right. types of businesses. Um, talking to somebody who, you know, they're doing hundreds of millions of dollars a year, yeah. uh, but their income, their lifestyle is not the same yeah. as what I get to enjoy being in this industry. Right. But my revenue is like a yeah. fraction of what theirs is. And so just, I think the profit margins is a, is a big piece of it. Um, so you see, something because I have a hundred million dollar company, you're like, wow, you're making a hundred million dollars a year. No, you're not. That's not the situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so uh, just looking at it as a business of man, if I tell people all the time, because a lot of people do our business part-time, instead of doing Uber, Lyft, real estate, whatever they're doing, uh, if you were gonna go put 10, 15, 20 hours a week into something, why not invest your time the way you invest your money? Because when you invest money, you put it into whatever asset you feel is gonna give you the highest rate of return. Mm -hmm. May or may not, but that's what your belief is. So why don't we invest our time that way? We spend our time, we just don't invest it. Yeah. So we spend our time at a job or spend our time at something that's easy. Oh, I can download this app and do this and it's easy. I can go try this and it's easy. I can do e-commerce, it's easy. I can do crypto and it's easy. As opposed to thinking about spending where it's easy, we think about investing. Man, what industry is the most profitable industry to be in? So if I was gonna give 10, 15, 20 hours a week of my life to something, why not give it invested into the industry that has the highest potential for a rate of return of income on my yeah. time? So one piece is that. Um, second is just systems. Yeah. So many companies, industries, they don't have a process by which they could take what they do and pass it off to somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, the whole conversation Tom Ellsworth was having about not just how do you build your company to sell it one day, how do you build your company so you can have a life yeah. one day? Yeah. <laughs> and built into what you were talking about with leadership development and pouring into people is if you can duplicate, if you can replicate, um, you, you create a much more sustainable way to have a business and really have a life that you enjoy that allows you to do so many things. Yeah. And so having that process. Um, and the third one was, how, how crazy it is that folks, when they, when they look at our model, when they look at our company, when they look at insurance, there's such a preconceived notion about what it means to be in insurance. But when you look at other industries, there's not really a preconceived notion. Everyone just thinks, well, I'm gonna work as hard until I'm rich, then I'm gonna die. But when you really get into those businesses and you see what kind of industry could give someone a fulfilling life, the ability to give back, serve, do the kinds of things they wanna do, um, what Pat's done with the vault to give people a duplicatable process is insane. But when people look on the outside of insurance yeah. versus from a lot of these business owners saying, so what's insurance like? What's it like being with Pat? Versus the actual inside, it's it's so different. It's interesting how people are paying tens of thousands of dollars and time in three days to be there just to learn the values and principles and systems he's built PHP with it. We were oh. rocking with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep. That to us are literally second nature. Right. In the okay. Marines, you yeah. were saying just a few minutes ago, everybody knows how to shoot a gun. Everybody knows how to do field mm -hmm. navigation. Like it's just basic. Right. Operating procedure. Right. Yeah. That's it. Uh, you've had different stabs at business too, George. You know, you uh, you know, you were putting out there on your live videos. You're investing in real estate. You're you're building an insurance business. What's what what's your perspective and experiences with building a real estate investing type of business, and also building an insurance business? Uh, I think it ties into the question that you asked on what what did you notice the difference between the vault and all these different business owners. The 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 common denominator that kept coming up is how the economy is affecting their business. Wow. Right? Hey, uh, well, it costs us this much money. Interest rates are this, or it costs us much. So now we got to mark up this, or our profits are this. Um, when we were we we, uh, we we did this tear down in Marina del Rey, and we're building this uh, like mini mansion uh, out there by the by the by the beach in in, in Los Angeles, California area, and. Um, the plans are wrong, and it's one little thing that's off. And now we got to go to the city, and there's two, three months of processing time where we can't build anything. The can't move stuff and stuff. Yeah. yeah, there was an ordinance that was changed, and so wow. they want us to tear this down, rebuild it. Steel beams are in. It's it's very. Yeah. It was complicated. We're carrying all these carrying costs the entire time. Because you're servicing debt. Correct. And contractors, yeah, there's, there, yeah. there's unless you're self-funding, there's yeah. a cost to borrow money. Yeah. And you're paying all these carrying costs. By the time we get this done, then weather is now factored in. So the, t the timing of the, you know, if you're a real estate developer 
and you're trying to finish certain stuff during the winter season, depending where you live, it's very, it's very tough. So you're factoring that weather. Um, and then and then COVID came in, right? So now there's slowdowns in in terms of processing times, right? Wow. For, for other for other other permits or, 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 or things. And then now we go to the market, it's finally done. And now we're bringing a mini mansion into sell at the market at the time where people don't know if the world's gonna shut down. <laughs> the, the racks are empty when you're going to the supermarket at that yeah, time. Yeah. So now you have to sell this asset at so much when you were projecting this. Yeah. You know, it was, we lo- I, I lost over a million dollars wow. investing in real estate. It's not something I'm proud of, I learned the lessons. And I would say a couple things to the entrepreneurs, whatever yeah. business you're in, diversifying yourself into multiple businesses at the same time is very difficult unless you have staff systems operations to where you can do that and i think there's a lot of failure in that a lot of entrepreneurs multiple streams of income they're trying to do all these different things and there's no system or support to to do those other things so that was a challenge the economy was definitely a challenge and it, it gave me so much gratitude for 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 having a strong business that's not affected by the economy and i think that as a, as a, as a husband uh, as a parent, person that provides for my son, my parents, you have to insulate yourself from a bad economy, and it's very difficult to do that. And so you got to figure out how do I do that? How do I how do I insulate myself against what's going to go on in the economy? Because it's going to keep going up and down. We got guys that we've recruited that uh, through John Mason that's doing mortgages, stud, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands last year. Hasn't done a deal this year, wow. you know, because of interest rates. So nine, nine months into it, wow. nine, hundreds of thousands to zero this year, zero. So, you know, economy affects most businesses and it's tough to find a, a recession-proof business. And, and when you're in that run in, in those industries, you don't think nothing's gonna go bad. No. You know, it's, it's like, I'm making 20,000, I'm 50,000, 100,000, I'm a millionaire. And yet I'm in an industry that is directly affected by the interest rates in the economy. Yep. Whereas our industry, in the insurance industry, a bad economy actually helps. And then when the interest rates goes up, who benefits? Our clients. Yeah. Our clients benefit from a rising interest rate. So um, as I wrap up, I'll, I'll finish with you. As we wrap up, somebody's on this journey. They, they, they want to be financially free. They want to find a pandemic-proof business, a recession-proof business. They want to be able to find themselves uh, in, in an industry that's willing to give back. Uh, what, what words of encouragement, uh, what things to avoid? What would you say to somebody who is watching this right now who's aspiring to become a first-generation cash flow? Well, I mean, you're going to say I'm biased, but like, if you haven't done insurance, try insurance. Like there's a reason why it's the most profitable industry in the US. There's a reason why the financial services industry has made more millionaires than any other industry. So if you're gonna get your feet into the pool, why not start in the place where you have the highest probability of success? I realize there's so many things out there that are, they're sexy, they're flashy, the marketing, the this, and it looks good. Or I had a friend who this, I had a mentor who this, I had an uncle who this, and that's great, but they may have been doing something that they can't duplicate or replicate, or the economy may have been different. Um, but if you look at the, the history of the people who've had success in this industry, I'd say if you're looking to get into entrepreneurship, man, why don't you start where there's the, the highest probability? And then if you find something from there that you're like, hey, I'm gonna do this niche, more power to you. But yeah, I'm, I'm biased. Yep, and on top of that, you can work with a guy like you. Hey, well, you know. On a, on a, on a day-to-day basis. There may be a good thing, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>